CCGs came about and actually he became our accountable officer uh, and also our chief clinical officer and he was one of the few people actually as a clinician who held both aspects of that role because a lot of other areas went for the, the clinician to have the chairing type role and actually management to take the accountability but locally he felt it was really really important for the clinicians to have that level of accountability and authority and he put himself into uh, that firing line so he could actually uh, try and guide us uh, in terms of actually how the future would move ahead. And again, he made some uh, amazing uh, contributions in during that phase. Uh, we actually had something called our uh, cluster budgets because a part of his vision was actually primary care and groups of practices should actually learn actually how to sort of commission 
for real rather than some of the virtual stuff which was actually happening. And that's sort of the precursor of really what GM is trying to do with 30 to 50,000 and nationally. Uh, but that happened in Oldham through uh, Ian and his vision for the future uh, uh, in terms of obviously where we needed to be. He oversaw and actually managed to convince uh, various people obviously who are very averse to uh, risking the public purse uh, to invest in something called Dragon's Den, which was again an attempt to actually foster innovation and actually get grassroots to come forward with ideas and actually put some of those things into place. And some of those initiatives are still going ahead and have actually achieved some uh, phenomenal successes uh, with them. So he's a man who, as I said, is you know, uh, forward thinking, has led the way. And even actually in retirement, he hasn't really stopped because actually he's doing his masters in public health. Uh, so he's a man who likes challenges all the time. He's not a man who obviously doesn't fear controversy. I can say that because hand on heart, and I think you know uh, all those colleagues will say, you know, we've not always had you know the relationship of being best friends between the LMC and some of his roles and responsibilities. But I think we've given each other respect <coughs> over the years to make sure that actually. Uh, you know, we managed to work together for the benefit of general practice and primary care uh, uh, locally. So, he was a GP at Woodlands Medical Practice, which is in Chadderton, right, in, in the heart of Oldham, for 37 years. Uh, and in his time, it actually has been one of our more successful practices in terms of uh, the achievements it has had. He came from a time when, you know, for those who were older, you know, where having the MRC GP was voluntary, and he didn't have the MRC GP. Obviously, all the new younger GPs obviously have to get that now. So he actually, with his practice, actually got the MRC GP uh, through uh, accreditation. So he went through that process. So quality uh, and standards were obviously very, very important to him. So I feel. So with great pleasure that actually for somebody who's given that length of service, led the line, taken the flag, and actually has given us some of the building blocks that actually hopefully will make sure that general practice in Oldham survives and thrives uh, in the new world. Uh, he truly deserves uh, our, our gratitude and, and thanks. Hi, Javier and uh, all colleagues uh, at the LMC there. Sorry I can't be with you, but obviously that's the joys of uh, being um, retired now. Uh, it's a great honour to receive this award, and thank you for Zuma for proposing this for, for me this evening. Uh, I've had a fantastic time working as a GP for nearly 37 years in Oldham, uh, and more latterly working with the CCG, and I recommend uh, this kind of work for any young uh, doctor coming through. I hope everyone has a really successful evening uh, and my best wishes. Thanks very much. Bye.